Okay, so this video is all gonna be about using the GoPro with high frame rates. The reason why this topic is interesting now is because in the past, back in 2014 and before, YouTube never supported high frame rates. So if you had a high frame rate video and you uploaded it to YouTube, YouTube would always down convert that to 30 frames per second and make using the high frame rate kind of useless unless you were using it for a slow motion. But now YouTube has support for higher frame rates, 48 frames per second, all the way up to 60 frames per second. So now it becomes an attractive option because our GoPro cameras support this and it's supported on YouTube. So high frame rates is something that's, that I've been playing around with for the last two months. And uh, I've learned the hard way. I've made a number of mistakes. I've ruined a few videos. One of my videos I'm gonna upload soon has kind of been ruined by the high frame rate thing. But I think I've mastered all the pros and cons so i'm going to tell you what to do so you know when to use high frame rates what to look out for so you don't mess up your videos this video that you're watching now this is a high frame rate video so please in the video below select 1080p at 48 frames per second before we continue all right once you've done that let's get started So why high FPS videos? Well, they offer a smoother motion, they offer reduced rolling shutter, which is the jelly effect you get in your video when your camera shakes around. You get a crisp image during action shots and scenes of high movement. You get reduced motion blur, and as a result, you get a video which has a hyper-realistic feel to it. The disadvantages of high frame rates is that they fare very poorly in low light conditions. So here I've got some low light examples taken in all the frame rates that the GoPro camera has. So if we look first here at the 24 frames per second, we can see that the right hand side of the frame is much more developed. As we shift to 30 frames per second, it's still pretty well developed but it's slightly darker. 48 frames per second, significantly darker. And at 60 frames per second, we're left with a very, very dark image. Let's just compare 24 frames per second to 60 frames per second to see the difference. What you're seeing is that at 60 frames per second, for this low light scene, each frame doesn't have enough time to properly expose. Okay, so to prevent this situation where you have a very dark, underexposed frame, GoPro added this mode called Auto Low Light. Now what that'll do is it'll immediately drop the frame rate so if you're at 48 frames per second, it'll drop the frame rate down to 24 frames per second in order to try get that extra exposure to keep the correct amount of lighting in the scene. Now while that might, might sound good in theory, in practice I found it to be quite a pain and I'm going to show you why in this video here. This video is shot at 48 frames per second with auto low light on. When I'm at the surface of the video, the video is recording in 48 frames per second. But as soon as I get down to about 10 meters, just before I go underneath this tank, the video has now shifted down into 24 frames per second. As I go underneath this tank, the video is still in 24 frames per second. But when I come out from underneath it, the video is, even though it's got more light, it is still in 24 frames per second. And the only time it kicks back up to 48 frames per second is when I'm already on the surface. So three quarters of my video were all shot in 24 frames per second, which is not what I wanted. The only way to avoid this is to not film in high frame rates to begin with. I could have got a much better video by just setting my camera to 30 frames per second and shooting the whole thing at 30 frames per second. Or I could have shot the whole thing at 48 frames per second with the auto low light off and just had to deal with that very dark scene under the tank. So here are some more scenes. 
Um, most of them were taken while the sky was overcast and it was rainy and it was quite a few meters underwater. So as a result, these high FPS videos ended up getting turned into low FPS videos by the auto low light feature, even though I felt the scene wasn't particularly dark. These clips are true 48 FPS, so you can really see the smooth and crisp motion in the video. Um, 60 and 48, they have a very similar look to them, but 48 has a slightly better low light tolerance. So the take home message that I want to give you guys is watch out for the low light feature. Watch out in conditions where it's overcast, rainy, you're deep underwater, you could be going into shadows, through tunnels. These are the type of situations which will trigger the auto low light feature. And to know, once your camera has gone into the auto low light mode, it will take significantly more light before it exits this mode. As a result, the remainder of your video, good light or not, could be filmed in the lower frame rate. Let's compare 48 and 60 FPS. 60 FPS has the smoothest possible motion. It also has the closest match to your screen's refresh rate, which is also 60 Hz. The disadvantages is that it has the worst low light performance. Remember in the beginning of the video, we saw it produce the darkest image. Also, if you're using it with the auto low light feature, you'll find that the, the camera shifts into the auto low light mode much sooner than it would if using the 48 FPS mode. If we look at 48 FPS, 48 FPS offers slightly better low light than 60 FPS, but if you're using the auto low light mode and it shifts down to 24 FPS, you'll find that this is too blurry to be useful for action videos. As a result, if you're using 48 FPS, I suggest you turn the auto low light off completely. If I know I'm going to have tricky lighting, I'm going to have light and dark areas, I'm going to stick to the standard 30 frames per second. If I know for sure that I've got good lighting, minimal shadows, etc., I will use the 48 frames per second with the auto low light turned off. My preference is to use the 48 frames per second. It still has the smooth motion of 60 frames per second, but it's got a slightly better low light tolerance. All right, that's it for me. And uh, you guys can let me know about your experiences with high frame rates in the comments below. And uh, for my subscribers, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.